Well, San Diego Comic-Con is upon us. A wonderful time to be a nerd. A time in which we see new product releases. We see exclusive content like the Magic the Gathering, San Diego Comic-Con, Planeswalker set. We see panels full of comic industry pros. People that real fans, real fans of comics want to talk to. People you want to pay to get autographs from. People you may even cosplay as. Comic-Con is a haven for nerddom. But, unlike you bigots, I go to Comic-Con to get woke. I don't go there to look at your stupid comic books and your Nazi symbolism. I go there to get woke. So today, I'm going to go through the top five wokest panels at San Diego Comic-Con 2018. And I assure you, these are all real. Sent to me by a viewer who is at San Diego Comic-Con and sent me pictures of the schedule. I'm going to start with something that I would say is a more normie. It's something that I think we can all relate to. And that is, of course finding comfort in the apocalypse. This is absolutely something I think we all need to do. This is about acceptance, folks. Um, and I would probably, after starting out here, you wanna start out, you wanna start out kind of small. You wanna ease into it, okay? So after attending finding uh, comfort in the apocalypse, I now feel like I'm ready for the following panels. I know what's going to come and I'm going to be okay with it. Such as this panel, Afrofuturism, Black to the Future. Now that, my friends, is woke. That is, I mean, I know as an ally, I can't attend this, but I, what I'm gonna do is stand in the back of the room and just hope that there are just little, little crumbs of wokeness that I can gather up in a small sack and then sprinkle them over my head so that when I get back to Wisconsin, I can share them with my fellow uneducated mouth breathers. Then of course we have quite a few here. How drawing groups can empower aspiring comic book artists. I think this sounds pretty good. And then we have Comics and healing. Yes, that's right, folks. Has the world got you down a little bit too too many bigots out there for you? Well, bury your nose in a comic book and let the healing begin. Uh, but then, of course, we have Beyond Wakanda, intersectional Afrofuturism. Yes, folks, because Wakanda is real. Didn't you know that? Uh, I see uh, people uh, talking about Wakanda, and I, I would love to live there. It's woke. It's the definition of woke. It's if those nasty who whites have n had never influenced that culture at all, almost like an ethno state. And then after that, I'd probably stay for strategies for adult graphic novel collections. Yes, I'm very interested in that. Oh, more than I care to admit. But then we have nostalgia. It doesn't belong to you. That's right, bigots. Do you do you remember the good old days? Thundercats. Do you remember what She-Ra looked like? Well, tough cookies, bigot. They don't belong to you. They belong to a small group of regressive elite. Get used to it. And then just next door, we've got queer comics for queer kids. Yes, that's right. Got to make sure you indoctrinate your small children as quickly as possible. You want them to read gay comics. You want them to watch gay TV. You want them to watch gay movies. You want to engross them in gay culture, especially during their formative years, like five, six, seven years old. This is really when you want to be talking to them about their sexuality. And, you know, we've got after that, we've got um, after that, we've got girls drawn girls pin up from a woman's perspective. That's right. Now, 
The sex of the person drawing the comic, of course, is very important to me. You're not woke if you don't know if you don't know everything about the person who's drawing it, specifically their political ideologies. That's what I would like to, you know, start with. Then I would like to look at the second most important thing, which is their gender and then probably their sexuality. This is the lens I want to see life through. And then we have the future of film is female. Well, I can't wait. This is what I would like to call the truth, my friends. You don't like it. You may not like it over there on your internet screens. And I know you came to Comic-Con to enjoy comics, but no, no, no. It's about getting woke, my friend. It is about social justice. Now, yes, you could make the argument that you could have instead put something in here for a particular fandom. Maybe, maybe your panel on Spawn, a black superhero. Uh, maybe, maybe a panel on uh, the origin of Superman's glasses and how they work with his superpowers. Maybe, maybe something comics related. No, I don't think you want to do that. You want to push as much identity politics onto these comic fans as humanly possible because of course comic-con is not for comic fans it's for social justice didn't you know and then look at this in the horton grand theater at 5 p.m we've got superheroes of body positivity that's where i'm going to end my day uh i need the healthy at all sizes superheroes i need this is what i need in my life I don't want to see Thor. Ugh. The the picture of health and masculinity, that's offensive. And femininity, that's also offensive. I only want overweight uh women of color in my comics. Uh, same with men. No white people, please. That's like rule number one. But if you you know you spent, you know, five hundred dollars on Comic Con to get there. Another couple thousand dollars booking your flight, staying in a hotel and eating $20 sub sandwiches around the convention hall because after all, it's California and everything's more expensive there. Uh, you know, who wants to go to a panel about anything comics related? In fact, I'm kind of concerned that there aren't more social justice panels. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of my time there. I mean... Sure, I'll pick up a couple SDCC pop vinyl exclusives because I'm kind of a normie collector like that. Definitely like to pick up the uh, Wizards of the Coast exclusive San Diego Comic-Con Planeswalkers. You know, I guess maybe I'll go to some comic artist panels. I guess maybe I'll, I'll check out some of the cosplay. But, I mean, if I'm not getting woke, I'm definitely wasting my time at a comic book convention, and you are too. So join me in letting the San Diego Comic-Con know that while we're happy that we can learn how to take comfort in the apocalypse, they're not doing enough to push political agendas. Now, if you enjoy my videos, then you probably enjoy my special brand of sarcasm dripping with it. In fact, obviously... You can attend these conventions and not go to these political panels. There are clearly plenty of options for you to attend other things. Now, it is my opinion that comic book conventions and gaming conventions should stay away from social justice and let the social justice conventions draw no people. But that's not up to me. And at the end of the day, I still attend conventions. And so I want to let you know that I will be at Gen Con in August, all four days. I'm looking forward to covering as many board games as possible, interviewing developers, people in the tabletop industry, and looking for companies that I can stand behind. As fun as it is to roast people, I would much rather be endorsing companies that are apolitical, that just love gaming. That's really what I want. And so if you're headed to Gen Con this year, I really hope you'll take a chance to uh, hang out. Maybe if you're wearing your Get Woke, Go Broke t-shirt, I'll spot you. And uh, I'll be live streaming the whole event. So I'll be doing <clears throat> the IRL live streaming. I've got a wireless mic set up. I've got a two camera set up. I'm working on finishing that all today. So 
make sure you watch the stream, watch the channel during Gen Con, because I'll try to do a live walk around. So if you've always wanted to go to Gen Con, but you can't get there, or you want to go to a booth and you have questions for somebody specific in a booth, you'll be able to ask them. I'll have text to speech enabled. Please be kind. I look forward to seeing all of you at Gen Con. Certainly we've got plenty to cover before that, but Again, I appreciate all your support. I appreciate everyone taking a minute to thumbs up the videos and sharing the tweets on Twitter. It's really helping the channel grow. Uh, thank you, and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon.